Hey buddy, I really panic when thinking about doing an interview. Is there a way I can practice and get better beforehand? Of course, of course you can. Just like any craft, a skill or muscle, you must practice and sharpen them every day, that, that's all. But what is difficult about practicing for interviews is that obviously you don't know exactly what kind of challenges and questions you will find yourself dealing with, right? But that's why you have to practice. So after having witnessed hundreds of selection processes here at Architect US, I'm pretty confident to say that we have some ideas for you to consider when practicing for an interview at an architecture firm. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us on the Being an Architect podcast to get more insightful information and tips to get your career moving forward. So let me share with you five golden tips that probably will help you while uh, preparing for the interview. Number one will be uh, set a goal for yourself. In order to understand what you want out of a professional experience, uh, you must start by setting up a plan for yourself, right? So make sure that you have a way to judge and assess your progress in your career over time. Think about what you currently are and what you do and do not like about your current employment, where you want to go next, and start looking at your long-term goals and the areas you might need to improve in to accomplish those goals. Uh, for example, you are an incredible renderer and have a great eye for design, but your managing and organizational skills are not the best. Well, uh, this would be obviously an area that you could start creating a game plan that is five years out, for example, and considers your weaknesses and how to improve them. Basically, the idea is to trace the roadmap of your career and make all the step, steps that uh, ensure your success. Having a clear plan in your mind will give you an edge when interviewing. So, ba-boom. Number two, research who you will be interviewing with. I know I have said this before in previous videos many, many times, but I always have to highlight this and advise you to research the team before going into the interview. I know that there are many companies that do not personalize their pitch and, and the content they present, but you must consider what their weaknesses are and where they are trying to sort up their talent for future projects. What does this mean? What it means is that you not only have to research the team, but also what direction the principles and leaderships are, are taking, the framing, right? So that if there is a future need uh, they may have, you can be proactive and let them know the ways in which you can assist them to also take on those challenges in the future. So remember, you want to sound like you are technically strong, but also the piece in the puzzle that, you know, will make their lives easier. So let me throw some ideas, you know, make this easier to understand. One would be to research their portfolio so that you know how your uh, professional interest and experience uh, connect with the firm. By knowing what they're trying to achieve as a firm, you will better understand what they need and, and looking for, right? Another way would be to use your network in trying to connect with them ahead of time, or at least interact, interact with other team members to make your presence and interest known. They want, they want passion, right, uh, for the what they are doing. So try to tie your skills and past experience to what they're doing. And you will be seen in, in, you know, with different eyes for sure. And another idea is to make a strong first impression. So ideally, you want to connect with the decision makers, you know, at a higher level. And this will allow you to stick in their minds when it comes to, you know, decision time. Tip number three, be honest and never, never lie. When you are revising your CV and portfolio, make sure that you are not only personalizing for the firm, but that you are also verifying your claims and statements. You do not want to get caught lying or blending the truth on any of your credentials, right? That would be such a bad first impression as well as a negative impact on, on, you know, on the trust in the professional relationship that most likely will disqualify you. Tip number four, make sure you have a personalized portfolio and CV. You probably have a large catalog of work that could fill pages on pages on pages of your portfolio, right? I always think when we get a portfolio with over 50 pages, so imagine when a decision maker, you know, sees that portfolio like it's very, very extensive and it has a huge pile of, you know, applications to cover. It's, it's, it's just crazy. So you want to make sure that you break down your professional experience into bite-sized pieces. You know, some of your projects may be less visual and more conceptual and open-minded. So you simply make sure you understand what each project requires in terms of graphics, technical and narrative, and have a mix of their highlights testing the limits. And remember, 
proofread and the spell check all your job application materials, you know, including your cover letter, CV, and portfolio. And have your friends and mentors revise and look over the uh, content you will be providing to the firm first. Number five, have interesting questions ready and more than one story. One of the best ways to show your interest in an area that you can prepare for quite a bit ahead of time is the preparation of top-notch questions. If you can show the firm that you are also interested in what they are talking about and or working on, they are more likely to engage in the conversation with you. So ask questions that lead the conversation towards stories that outline how you work with teams to solve problems, how you have taken on big challenges before and succeeded, and ideally, a story that connects with the decision maker's emotional side. To me, connecting on an emotional level is a deal breaker and has always made me win the battle, always. So consider the following questions uh, to ask. They might help you to prepare a list of you know, your own questions and also questions that provide you with insight into how you might be able to fit in such as, I don't know, company goals, do employees recommend the company and experience, how informal or not is the company, how successful is the company, do they have a space for you? And these can be great questions to have ready to ask and, and start an interim conversation. Is there a diversity of perspectives within the company? Uh, what is the challenge that the company work on as a team? What opportunities for moving up do you have? All these are great questions to consider, but make sure you personalize them according to the firm you're talking to. As I always say, consider the audience uh, when interviewing. This is key and it's gonna give you an edge, you know, when preparing and when, when you're actually in action. So this is all for this week. Subscribe below for more insightful tips and recommendations to make your career development easier. And in the next episode, I'll talk about the most common mistakes made on a job application. So don't miss it. See you next week.